we are going to go deeply into the core of some of the most important problems that our country is currently facing. Let's get ready to embark on a journey that will be filled with revelations, insights, and even a few surprises along the way. Get yourself ready to be educated, given more power, and perhaps even entertained for a short while. All right, let's get started. Stimulus Updates is your go-to channel for the most recent news and updates on economic stimulus programs. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our very important channel. I'm Ali, and I'm here to tell you about some exciting new developments that we have brought to your attention today. Before we get into the updates for today, however, make sure that you click the box that says subscribe and that you enable the notification bell so that you are never left out of any information regarding stimulus-related topics. During these trying times, we are here to keep you informed and to give you the power to make decisions. Let's get right down to business, shall we? When we talk about numbers on a spreadsheet, we are not simply talking about numbers. We are talking about a legacy of recklessness in financial matters that threatens to destroy the entire fabric beneath which our society is built. Once upon a time, we were confronted with a mountain of debt that was worth $18 trillion. Now, fast forward to the present day, and that number has skyrocketed to an astounding $34 trillion, and there is no sign of a stop in sight. The rate at which we are amassing debt, which exceeds $1 trillion every six months, is far more worrisome than the current situation. Just give that some time to sink in for a second. We are about to be hit by a financial tsunami that is raging toward us. Furthermore, if we do not take prompt and firm action, the repercussions may ultimately be devastating. However, how did we arrive at this location? How did we let our debt to balloon to such astronomical levels? How did we allow it to spin out of control? There are a number of causes that have contributed to this situation, including excessive spending by the government, unwise fiscal policies, and a failure on the part of leadership to prioritize long-term sustainability over short-term benefits. Our habit of living beyond our means and borrowing money to satisfy our insatiable desire for government programs and services has become second nature to us, and we do it without giving any thought to the consequences that this may have in the long run. Who else is responsible for paying the bill? Our offspring, our grandkids, and future generations that have not yet appeared. Without a doubt, this is a morally reprehensible act. However, this is not only a matter of ethics, it is also in the realm of economics. Simply, the interest payments on our national debt are enormous, and they will soon be comparable to the amount of money we spend on defense or on discretionary spending. Our resources are being depleted. Economic progress is being stifled and our future prosperity is being put in jeopardy as a result of this vicious cycle. In that case, what is the answer? What are some ways that we can save ourselves from this financial quagmire and get our nation back on the right track to achieving financial stability? We are going to have to make some difficult decisions and demonstrate courageous leadership. Spending by the government needs to be reined in. Important programs need to be prioritized and useless earmarks and pork barrel projects that serve no real function other than to feed the pockets of special interests need to be eliminated. We need to reform our tax code in order to make it more egalitarian and fair. This includes making sure that everyone pays their fair share of taxes and closing any loopholes that provide affluent people with the ability to avoid paying their fair share of taxes. On the other hand, the most essential thing is that we need to have an open and honest discussion about the part that the government plays in our lives and the sacrifices that will be necessary in order to ensure the future of our country. In spite of the fact that it will not be simple and that there will be opposition at every stage of the process, 
we owe it to ourselves and to the generations who will come after us to address this crisis head on and to plot a route that will lead to budgetary prudence. Let us now shift our focus to social security, which is a fundamental component of our social safety net and offers essential assistance to millions of people in the United States who are going through their retirement years. Nevertheless, there is no denying that Social Security is confronted with its own unique set of issues, challenges that have the potential to undermine its long-term survival and put the financial security of millions of pensioners in peril. The trust fund reserves for Social Security are decreasing, and if we do not take action quickly, we may be facing a drop of 20% in benefits for all beneficiaries by the year 2034. The figures do not lie. This is a thought that should be taken seriously, particularly by those individuals who rely on Social Security as their principal source of income throughout their retirement years. Therefore, what is the cause of this impending crisis? To put it simply, it is a confluence of variables, including an aging population, a falling birth rates, and wage growth that has remained stable. To put it another way, the number of pensioners receiving benefits is more than it has ever been, yet workers are not contributing to the system in order to keep it going. However, there is good news. We have the ability to implement measures that will strengthen Social Security and ensure that it will be solvent in the long run. We have the ability to increase the payroll tax rate, modify the retirement age, and modify the means test benefits for individuals with high incomes. These are only some of the choices that are available to us. And despite the fact that they might not be well received politically, we have no choice but to pursue them if we want to achieve our goals. But maybe the most essential thing that we can do is to have an open and honest discussion about the future of Social Security and the sacrifices that will be necessary to assure that it will continue to exist for the foreseeable future. It is a topic that we can no longer afford to ignore due to the fact that it will not be simple. It will involve difficult choices and it will take sacrifices from all of us. Let's go on to the next topic, which is inflation, which is the enemy of every saver and investor because it is the quiet murderer of purchasing power. The ongoing threat that inflation poses to our economy is that it brings about a decline in the value of our currency and makes it more difficult for families to make ends meet. Even while inflation has slowed down a little bit over the past few months, it is still persistently higher than the target rate of 2% that the Federal Reserve has set, which indicates that there are ongoing pressures on both prices and wages. And while it is reasonable to anticipate 